This is the plaintiff, Tatiana Lavelle. She says she rented an apartment from the defendant, and the louse didn't renew her lease, and she was forced out. The unscrupulous guy now refuses to return her security deposit. He has no right keeping it. And she's here in the name of justice to get the $1,700 returned to her. This is the defendant, Horace Spence. He says the plaintiff couldn't afford to rent his place any longer, and it was best for both of them if she moved out, which she did. Unfortunately, the plaintiff tried to stiff him on the last month's rent. He's not running a charity and needs his money, so he took her security deposit, which is right. He's accused of not having a heart. All parties, please use your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Laville, you are suing Mr. Spence, your landlord, for $1,700 in a security deposit that he refuses to return. Tell me what's going on. So um, I moved in in about in March of 2021. Um, when I first moved in, I gave him the first month's rent and the security deposit. The following month, um, I did ask if I could have a prorated amount. He didn't do it Because you had moved the first month in the middle I'm of the month. In the middle of the month, yes. All right. So I moved, um, we had a verbal agreement and he agreed to take off $400 off the balance. All right, so now you're, the clock resets and now you're due every first of the month. Yes. Okay, go on. So for April of that month, he prorated it and um, the 400 off, I paid 1300 for that month. Um, times were a little hard, so I did fall off, but I applied for the rental assistance program and I- That's um, the federal government's assistance program to help you pay your rent after yes. COVID. Yes. Okay. So I got approved for that program in about uh, December. So they covered up to seven months. I was due on November and December, and then the rest I wouldn't have to pay until June of 2022. Okay. L let's talk about what happens. Why is it you're moving? Are you on a month to month at this point? No, or? I was on a yearly lease. So okay. um, my lease expired in February of 20, February 28th of 2022. Um, he reached out to me after my lease expired. Um, I wasn't too... Dur I'm, at February of 2022, was the government paying your rent or were you? The government. Okay, and that went on until May. The last month they paid was May of 2022. Yes. So in February, he reaches out to you on what? He reached out to me the month after my lease expired. He reached out to me on March. March. Um, I'm new to the renting process. I was not aware that you're supposed to give, receive your lease 60 days prior to it expiring. I received my lease after it expired. Uh, I mean, um, I did send him all the documents. If you don't have a new lease, you don't have a right to live there, and it just becomes a month to month. If you continue to live there and he continues to take rent, then it just becomes a month to month. But within the um, rental assistance program, there are protections against the renter that he didn't abide by because he cannot evict. Uh, protections rent. for the renter. Yes. That he didn't abide by because what did um, he do? He tried to evict me for basically holdover tenancy or expired lease. But um, I sent him all the documents that he asked me for when he asked them, and I let him know, but he didn't reach out back to me until April, which was uh, two days before May, April 30th, right. letting me know that um, to contact him to discuss the new lease and the upcoming rent payment. I didn't respond to him right away because I knew that I wasn't supposed to pay rent until June, but um, on May Okay, oh, so you're not worried. <laughs> right, but maybe yeah. he's worried. Right, yeah. because the, the government's going to stop paying your rent. You're going to have to pay your rent, and he needs to know what's going on. So he, he would like you to respond. So when do you respond? I responded to him the day that I came home. I found an eviction letter on my door. Well, that's why he went. <laughs> that day was how many days after you didn't respond? That was two days after. Two days after? Yes. Okay. So uh, do you have the eviction letter that was put on your door? Yes. May I have it? There's two letters. Okay. That your lease expired as of February 28th. You failed to comply with providing all requested documents as proof of income for lease renewal. You must pay the full amount owed May rent payment. So were you paid for May by... That was paid for May. That okay, was so actually, why, this I, notice, though, is saying... Right. We actually spoke on the phone and we clarified that. So this uh, is an error on your part. That's an error on my part. You yes. meant what? I meant uh, for June. 
Okay, but right. you're you're posting this on May second. Right. But so I, June's rent's I, not I was, owed. I was also trying to get her into the motion to come and. Yeah, but you don't have a right to file something called an eviction notice and demand that rent be paid a month in advance. So th this is a completely illegal document. You cannot tell them in in this uh, officious tone that you uh, this is what's going to happen if you don't pay June rent on May second. I mean, you can't do that. Within three days, you have to pay June rent on May fifth, or else. You, uh, you know, that's the, you don't do this, okay? okay? You're not a lawyer, and don't pretend to be. There's certain things you can file as a landlord, but they are very specific, and usually the the words are right in the law about what you can say. But you can't pretend to be notifying them about something you have a legal right to do that is completely bogus because you can't demand June rent in May. All right, it says last two months bank statements, last four consecutive pay stubs. And payment. All right, so what do you do in May when you get this? When he asked me for the documents, I did text him and I let him know on March of um, March 20th that I would send him the documents. So March 21st, I do have the emails where I sent him the documents. What documents did you send him the on March 21st? The pay subs as well as the um, bank statement. You had done that? Yes, and I texted him and let him know that I sent him, and he said he would review them. Okay, did you receive that two months earlier? Yeah, I did receive and it. And what, so you're like uh, not on the ball and... Well, listen... So I now the month is wrong, the notice is illegal, and you didn't bother to check your emails. Well, the thing is, I, I, I'm pretty busy. I have all the. We're all busy, yeah. pal. I mean, yeah, you know, so. but you're getting yeah. super mad at her and making up things about what her obligations are when you didn't check your email. So now he checks his email and he sees it. And what happens? So when I got that eviction notice, I called him that day, and then we had a discussion, and he discussed. How many me. bedrooms are in this place? One. Okay, go on. He discussed with me that I don't make enough to be able to rent the apartment. Um, but I had sent him the documents two months prior. I was like, why am I getting it now? It's April 30th, I mean, May 2nd, and I sent you those documents two months prior. Like, I would have made prior arrangements had I known that I can't afford the apartment no more. Okay, so what happens? What do you guys discuss? You say, forget it, I'm leaving? He says, so, forget it, you gotta go? What happened? Later that day, I went back into my email to look at the uh, rental assistance program, to look at the protections that I had, and I wrote an email and sent it out to him, you know, basically discussing the eviction notice, how I wasn't too fond of it, and then... Um, okay, then hold on. What exactly did you bring up to his attention? I have the email here. Okay, um, can I, I see don't the email? It. Yeah. So this is the email that I sent him, and I sent him all the screenshots of the protections that are in, provided in the assistance program. All right, so on May 2nd, you send him an email saying, I'm really upset finding the eviction notice on my front door. I was taken aback. I would like to bring several points to your attention. My lease expired in February. I did not receive my proper 60-day notice. As per real property law blank, under New York State law, if you have lived in your apartment for more than one year but less than two, your landlord must provide you with 60 days advance notice before raising your rent or not renewing your lease. Okay. As per ERAP, that's the Federal Assistance yes. Program, application approval, the state approved rental payment this program covered the months of, and it covered May, because at this point you're looking at it, something that says you need to pay May, yes. and you know that I don't May is May. already paid, so point well taken. Also, per this agreement, after your landlord receives this money, they must apply the money to past due rent, waive any late fees of past due rent, not raise the rent for one year, he didn't do any of those, not evict you for the reasons of expired lease or holdover tenancy for one year after the first payment is received. Yeah, I'm remembering that. That the law includes... Well done by you. Thank Go you. you. Oh, who's you? Who's that? Wow. <laughs> who's... Sister. You're yes, the sister? Yeah. Are you a lawyer? No. Are you a law I student? Research. No, but you do your research. Wow, that's... You go. I'm not sure it affects this case, but it's really well done, this email. But let's put a pin in this a second, because I'm not sure I have to address that in order to decide this case. Um, at some point, you say to him what your plans are, and what do you do? You send him a text, an email? I sent him another email stating that I would okay. not... Okay, and that email is dated what? That was May 13th. I have that here. I've decided not to renew my lease. I would like some time to be able to move my things. Considering I moved in March 18th, I would like to be out June 18th. Now, that's fine if you've been paying rent every 18th of the month, but that's not what happened. What happened was you moved in in the middle of a month but paid the whole month. Then the next month you negotiate paying prorated and now everything resets and your due, rent's due the first of the month for the month. I guess what you're saying is somehow you should be able to stay June 1st through the 18th for free? Um, I just... 
figures, you know, since I moved in mid-month, I allow me to mid-month to move out. It's fine that you pick the day you want to move out. That mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. And he's not saying, oh, she overstayed, you know, whatever. Like, the day you move out isn't the issue. The issue is, did you pay for June? And your answer for why you didn't is what? I already told him I was leaving. And therefore what? You don't have to pay? No, but I sent the email and we had, I didn't receive a response right away, but he did come to an agreement that the 18th was fine for the me. The 18th is fine. It's mm -hmm. just that you need to pay rent and you didn't. And Correct. so he took the rent out of the deposit. So why isn't that Correct. I understand, but in the lease that right. we both signed off on, he yeah. does state that the uh, security deposit cannot be used towards For the you! You can't use it as a sword, but he can use it as a shield, you know? <laughs> if you don't pay rent, that's one of the things that he can do, mm -hmm. is to get the rent out of there. I guess you, you might have an argument, particularly in light of everything he was wrong about that's mm -hmm. bothered me, you might have an argument, hey, the rent should be prorated because he knew I was leaving on the 18th. It wasn't a surprise. He didn't think I was leaving on the 30th. He knew I was leaving on the 18th and nobody objected to it. And he knew that as of May 13th. So maybe he could have gotten another tenant because he had a whole month to plan to have another tenant for the rest of June. So I, I just want to pay prorated. I'll hear you on that. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? I hear you. Because free ain't going to happen. Yeah, I know. No matter how well put together the email is that you fought him with, free isn't going to happen because free... Uh, would you like to say something? Oh, well, I'd say that, you know, she wasn't a bad tenant. I really tried to work with her. Um, the, the, and I really told her that, like, um, I don't think she could afford it based on the, the financials that she showed me. So, you know, she decided that, you know, she was going to leave. Right. Did you expect her to pay rent on June 1st? Sure. And so did you call her and say, where's the rent? Or that you didn't do that because you had her security, so... I had the security, yeah, so, right. you know, and she said she was believing on the 22nd. And you were fine with her staying until the 18th, especially because sure, she, she gave you a month and a half notice about that. She could have stayed to the end of the month. So why didn't yeah. you... She could have. Yeah. And, and typically speaking, I would hear you on that argument that if they say the first day, they owe the month. But she tells you a month and a half in advance, this is the day I'd like to leave. So you had plenty of notice to be able to re-rent the place, and you didn't object to her staying until the 18th. And I really hate that notice that you put up demanding May rent when it had already been paid to you, and then telling her, well, now, I, now never mind. Now what I'm demanding is June when you don't have a right to demand June. I couldn't show the apartment if she's living in there. You have no, to you prep can show it right away. Yes, well, first of all, that's not true. Yeah. You can show the apartment while she's living there. The same way if I paid my rent, you also can't, you know, you have to co coordinate with me to show it in order to not skip one day uh, and, and have a back-to-back -back tenants. Mm -hmm. You still would have to show it when the other tenant's there. You just, and you have the right to that. I presume that your lease says that, you know, uh, with reasonable notice, and that's how you do it. Otherwise, you know, then you need time in between, and you take the time in between, which landlords do, and landlords take the hit for that time if they would rather not be rushed and, you know, and have a few weeks to set it up and rent out at the middle of the month. But... You know, in every tenancy, when someone's there, if you want to rent it for the next day, for July 1st, then you have to show it while they're there. Um, so, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make her pay the prorated amount just because the notice came so early and there was no objection to it. There was no... I have been in this position as a landlord, and I've said to them, you will need to pay the entire month of, of June if you are going to be there on June 1st. Otherwise, you will need to leave on May 31st. So now I've said that to tenants before. Mm -hmm. So I just want to put you on notice. If you're if you're staying in June, you need to pay rent for June because I'm not going to eat rent for June. You do nothing. You will allow her to stay until the 18th. I'm going to make her pay the prorated portion, which means for the 18 days that she's there, she has to pay one thousand nineteen ninety nine, and he has your seventeen hundred. So that means you will get back six hundred and eighty dollars. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. <laughs> So the plaintiff prevails in this case. She's going to get back money, $680, but not the $1,700 she was suing for. Mr. Spence, the uh, defendant, has just come out of the courtroom. What do you feel about that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Spence? You've got to give back $680. Well, you know, you know, I think it was, you know, overall fear. Um, she was a fairly decent tenant, and she needs help to move on, which, you know, she made that decision, so I didn't have to go through an eviction eviction to get her out, so that's a plus. 
All right, thank you very much, sir. Uh, that'll do it for you. $680 you give back. The exit's on your left there. Ms. Lavelle is now on her way out of the courtroom. I don't know if she's thrilled or not. <laughs> she wanted $1,700, the whole thing back. So you don't get it, Ms. Lavelle. What are you thinking? Um, it's pretty fair given the terms that I stayed half the month, so it's understandable. All right, well, you, you seem pretty okay with it. Good yeah. enough. You didn't get $1,700, but uh, you're a pretty smart person. You, you had some good points in this case. Thank so you. good for you. All right, so that'll bring this case to a close, and I think everybody who rents has just learned something from all the pointers here. What do you think, Army? Doug, this is a really interesting case that underscores obligations of landlords when a tenant moves out. They have all sorts of obligations that vary from state to state, but generally, if a landlord wants to keep part or all of a security deposit because of a failure to pay rent or damage to the unit, uh, the landlord has to itemize exactly why he is taking certain money out and get it to the tenant within a certain number of days. Um, oftentimes, it's 14 days. Sometimes, it's 30. But you got to look at the law in your state to know. I'm interested in hiring a contractor to replace a sidewalk in front of my home. What should be in the contract to protect me, and how should the contract be written? Thank you. Okay. Um, my general advice to anyone ever is the contract should be written with as many details as possible. Just right. sit there and think what could go wrong right. and put all of that in there. For example, you want to make sure that it's done to code. Of course. Right? So right. you put in there according to code. Right. If it requires a permit, you want to make sure that they get the permit. Right. Um, or you want to keep your mouth shut. Whichever it is, but right. put it in there. Whatever you want protection on, put it in there. If you want to make sure that they are a licensed contractor, then make Say sure so. that the contract has their license number and you've checked it. Because what I find is that everybody gets really hinky about the license after everything goes downhill, not before. Yeah, sometimes they'll send you like a letterhead <laughs> or something that says licensed and bonded and it'll have a number and the m number might not correspond to them. That's how yeah. too, you know. Yeah, so, or it and, may be expired and they haven't right. kept up with it. Or it's some uh, company they used to work so for. So if that's important to you, then right. make sure it's not only on the contract, but that you look it up. Right. Um, you that need a they, payment schedule. A payment schedule, because you don't want to pay schedule. the whole thing up front, because right. then there's no incentive to finish. Right. So you want to have a payment schedule, like beginning, middle, and end. Right. At, try to do beginning, middle, and end. But if you can't, at least beginning and end, because you need to have some payment on your side to make sure that the, the end is correct. And some time deadlines. And right, time, probably time deadlines, you know, but you have to be more to the flexible. Extent that that's possible. Right. right. With contractors, yeah. there's always going to be delay. And yeah, that, that, it, that the work is done roped off because you don't want anybody to be right. unsafe around it. Right. 